Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for tonight's warm-up session number one of Serverless Days Paris 2022. Uh, my name is Frédéric. I will be your host for tonight's session. And let's start right now with tonight's warm-up number one. Um, as you may already know, Serverless Days Paris uh, 2022 edition um, will be split in three events. This first event, a second warm-up event next week, and the main event by the end of this month. I would like, just before we start uh, with tonight's event, to take a few minutes to thank the various persons responsible for making this event happen. Um, we'll have, of course, in the menu tonight, just before we start thanking um, the various people that made this event possible, we'll have a talk by Massimo Bonani, uh, who will speak IoT in serverless source on Azure Cloud uh, during the first 30 minutes of tonight's event. And then the following 30 minutes, we'll have a roundtable uh, where Laurent Grandjot, Rob Sutter, and myself will be joining Massimo to discuss uh, what we will have learned during his talk. Um, I would like to take this occasion, of course, to thank the sponsors of Serverless Days Paris 2022 edition, uh, Teodo, AWS, Lumigo, Contrast Security, Oversea, Zenica, and Programme. Uh, I would like to thank as well uh, our host for tonight's event, Laurent Grandjot uh, will be joining just to tell you a little bit more about the serverless architecture meetup Paris. Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoy your evening and I hope you will enjoy the, the, the show. A uh, little uh, word about the serverless meetup Paris. So we are a meetup since 2016. We have more than 104,400 people sorry, uh, in the meetup, and, uh, and the meetup is always open for, for return of experience about serverless, how you develop serverless in your company, how you deploy that in your company, what are your uh, pro problems and, and feedbacks. So, so if, you want to, if you want to speak at the meetup, Please contact me or contact uh, Frederic, and uh, I will. We'll just organize a new a new serverless meetup. Thank you very much, Laurent, and thank you so much for having us tonight on your channel for this uh, warm up event. Um, we'll be back with you a bit later during the roundtable. Um, would like to take the occasion as well to speak on the Serverless Days Paris uh, main event that will be hosted on June twenty two at uh, La Bellevilloise, a very famous place of Paris 20th district. Uh, during one day, we will have amazing speakers from all around the world joining the French community to share their, ex their experiences on the serverless topic. Um, just before we skip to the main menu, I will as well ask Rob to join me, tell you a little bit more about serverless days New York. Right, Rob? Mm -hmm. Right. Hi, Frederick. Thanks for having me. Uh, that's right. I know some people are joining from around the world and might not be able to make it to the event in Paris. If you're near us, please consider coming to Serverless Days New York. We're on June 24th, two days later, at the Microsoft Reactor Center in Times Square, right in the heart of Manhattan. So would love to see you there if you can join us. Thanks. Thank you, Rob. And now to the main event of tonight, uh, I will uh, give the stage to Massimo. Uh, first talk IoT in serverless source. Thank you, Massimo. The stage is yours. I think we can start. Okay, perfect. Thank you, all of you. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here. My name is Massimo, as you can understand by my English and also by my name. I am an Italian. I am a technical trainer in Microsoft. My my work is to explain Azure to our customer, and today. I would like to propose you a solution for a serverless uh, scenario. What is a serverless scenario? Simple, sorry, a simple IoT scenario using serverless, sorry. But an IoT scenario, a simple IoT scenario is composed by devices. In our demo, the devices produce uh, 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 telemetry based on temperature and humidity in, the, in my room, for example, as I show you later in this demo, in, in my demo. And also we need a simulator because when we want to test our 
solution. We don't want to buy thousands of devices and uh, uh, spread, spread these devices all over the world. So in uh, the project I give you in the, in the reference of in my slides, you can find uh, in the repo, you can find also a simulator. Simulator just simulate a device, uh, a set of devices uh, uh, that randomly generate the temperature and, uh, and, um, and humidity and, and allow you to yeah, simulate uh, a real world uh, um, uh, scenario, real world uh, solution. In the middle, we have uh, IoT Hub. IoT Hub is the ingestion service uh, that allows you to take uh, to ingest uh, all telemetry, telemetry is generated by the devices and uh, give these, device, these telemetries to your solution. The uh, main goal of this presentation is this part, the question mark part. I want you to propose uh, a solution based on uh, Azure functions. Uh, uh, in particular, using durable function, but I show you what I mean in the in the in this session. And we want to elaborate the telemetry. So we want to manage the telemetry the telemetry is for each device and elaborate. For example, uh, check if the temperature is over a, a threshold, and then uh, we want to not notify something to an external service or to the device itself. We want to store in the for each device uh, uh, and minutes uh, i don't know last one hour of telemetry because we want to make some oh, analysis on that we want to provide apis external apis rest apis to in uh, to, to to query the devices all the device and take uh, for each devices the status are or the, the telemetries or an api that allow you to configure device how many time how many minutes i want to store in my devices what is the threshold to uh yeah to 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 throw a notification and so on and on the end i want to manage different types of device now we have temperature and humidity in the future probably we can have other uh, telemetry or other kind of device and we want to uh, model each device with a different uh, object in, my, in our solution. So we need to found a solution also for that. And we want, I tell you before, I want to interact with external service. I don't know, for example, if, if a device uh, uh, telemetry, if the device temperature goes over a threshold, I want to send an SMS to the, to the owner of that device. I want to inform him uh, about that or something similar. And then, Finally, I want a dashboard. I want to check what is the, uh, yeah, the, the graphic, the, the, the draw, the, 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 the yeah, the telemetries in, uh, in general and for each device. This telemetry, of course, uh, uh, will use the APIs exposed by our solution. Then we need, uh, what we need? Event real scalability because, uh, because a telemetry is an event, we want to buy our solution. So probably we hope that in future, in the future, we uh, will have more than device, the, the number of devices that we have now. So if our devices grow, number of devices grow, we want to scale. And we want to scale uh, automatically. Second, each device in our solution manage the state. We don't want to um, take care of this uh, state. Oh, sorry, the state. I don't want to, to, to manage the state. I don't want to care about uh, the, the API to write the state in its database or in a storage. I just want to manage the state abstract in an abstract way and the platform need to save the state for me. This is our requirement. And also I want an asynchronous interaction because I don't want to create a chain of calls. I don't want to, uh, because, it, because it is a serverless way. I, it is a serverless world. So every object, every place every, every part of our solution must be yeah, asynchronous to the respect to the other so yeah just this one and also yeah i want to support different types of device a solution for that is using a durable function i suppose uh, i give uh, i yeah i suppose that you know what is azure function if you don't know please go to the documentation i give you a set of links on the end of the slides about that 
Gravel functions uh, is uh, an extension of the Azure function. Azure function uh, run on a runtime, and this runtime allow you to extend. So allow you to create a new component. Uh, and one of these components built by Microsoft is durable function. The idea of durable function is uh, allow you to have a call between function that is impossible in the standard Azure function, but uh, uh, yeah, you need to, to, to call one function to, the, to another function or from another function. And uh, the durable function manage for you all the state of these calls. So it manage for you in abstract way. So you don't care about uh, the, the state, uh, the checkpoint, the restart of each function because the, 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 the framework, uh, the, the extension manage for you. So it is a, a good point for us because we don't want to manage the, uh, the state, the, the, the persistence of the state. It's based, sorry, it is based on a, a, a module, a, a, an open source framework called Durable Task Framework. It is exactly the module, the, yeah, the, the framework that manage for you the, the persistence, the, 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 the operation of state persistence. So every time you change something in a, uh, in a durable entities, I show you later in this, uh, in this session, this part of the durable function take the status, save on the persistence part of the durable function, and retrieve the status uh, automatically when you need them. So exactly what we're looking for uh, uh, about the abstraction of the state. It is written in C-sharp, but uh, you can write durable function in these uh, five uh, languages that are more or less all the languages you can use uh, for the uh, Azure function, except for Java, there is no extension for Java now. I don't know in the future if it will be deployed. We have uh, four kind of uh, function we can write with the durable function. In this uh, um, session, we look at the entity. The entity is like, uh, what is a, the entity? The name of the entity is durable entities or entity function. You can find both the names in, in the documentation. It's based on durable function. It's just, uh, you have just a special trigger. Trigger is the component in an Azure function that allow you to start in a serverless way when arrive uh, a, a, an event. Uh, in this case, the event is, I want to change the state of this entity, okay? Start these particular entities. And uh, what you can do, you can create, uh, I show you later in the demo, a C-sharp class that allow you to abstract the status. So in our device, probably the class uh, contains the last M telemetries for to manage the last M minutes uh, as, uh, uh, as in the requirement uh, and uh, expose uh, the method to change, to add the new telemetries or to, I don't know, change the configuration. So you write the entities like uh, a standard c -sharp class or like a, a JavaScript object and some, something similar, and all the uh, states are managed by the framework it's behind the scene. Okay, so for us it's good because I don't want to. I am an Italian, so I don't like to to, to job a lot. So for me, if someone save for me the state, of course it's a joke. Or not all the Italian like me are yeah uh, lazy, but yeah, if someone can uh, can work for me, for me it's okay. How you can. Um, address the IQ, uh, how you can uh, uh, set the, the identity, the entity you want to manage. You want to, uh, yeah, add telemetry and so on. You have two objects, the name and the key. Standard device may be the name of the class you create for the entities and uh, living device may be the device that now are running in my living to, to collect, collect the, the telemetry. So with these two objects, with these two strings, because they are string, you can address a single entity. The, the durable entities is like um, an actor model. If you know actor model is a, yeah, a, a, a concurrency model in, uh, in computer science, uh, born in uh, 1973, more or less, uh, as the same uh, age I have. And uh, yeah, you can address a single actor, in this case, durable entities. And what you can do, you can call an operation. An operation is a identified by the entity ID, the two name and key, the name of the operation, the input data you pass, and if you want, it's not necessary, not mandatory, the schedule time. So you can also 
yeah, um, delay the execution of that operation if you want. In our, in our solution, in the solution I propose, it, it's, not, uh, it's not important. We don't use the scheduled time operation because we don't need, we, when, we arrive, uh, when a telemetry arrives, I want to change immediately the state of the device, but maybe some, some scenario you want to implement the scheduled time. You don't need to implement. Just when you call the entity, you say, I want to call this entity, ID, name, and key. This is the operation. This is the payload they want to pass to the entity. And don't call this entity now, but uh, yeah, from uh, 10 minutes from now, OK? I tell, told you uh, you can create uh, a class, C Sharp class. I show you in a demo. This demo, the demo is uh, written in, in C Sharp. Uh, this class must be constructable because I told you that the framework, the labor task framework, manage for you the persistence of the state. Uh, the, 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 the idea is you have a class in memory, you change something, when the framework must be must save the, the state, deserialize sorry, the class and write on the on the storage. When you need to change the entity, the framework redirects this entity in memory and deserialize. So you, the, the framework must create the class, just simple. And must be JSON serializable, just because uh, um, for, for the reason I, I mentioned before, JSON serializable by default, if you want, you can change your serialization uh, model, but yeah, JSON serializable is the default. And also, come on, okay, yeah, let's go. You have some limitation of what you can do. The operation, a method of the class, the methods of the class you want to interact with uh, using the, the, the entity must uh, have at most uh, one argument. So you cannot have uh, an, a, a method with three arguments. In that case, you need to create a class that com is composed by the three arguments and you pass the single, uh, single class. You cannot use overload and you cannot uh, use generic. It's just a limitation I know but we can live uh, also with this limitation. The return value, the arguments, the only one, zero or one argument, and the value you can return from an operation must be serializable. If you understand the mechanism, the, the algorithm used by the, the framework, every time you call uh, from a function another an entity, from an entity another entity, the framework for you take the argument, serialize on the storage, JSON, and deserialize when uh, the, the, the framework call the, the destination entity. And when the entity finish and come call, return the value, uh, uh, again, that value will be serialized on the storage and deserialized on the, call, the, the, the caller uh, function. So yeah, JSON, uh, the serialization is important for the class and for the argument and for the, uh, the value. And you can define uh, an interface, OK? It's important because if you can define an interface, you can apply dependency injection, you can apply factory method to create different entity for with the same interface, of course, yes, but, can, but you can extend your uh, solution defining new uh, entity in the, in the future, of course. What, how you can access this, you have three methods. The calling method is uh, a two-way communication in all the uh, yeah all the way you can interact with the entities is uh, in a serverless way two way means uh, a caller calling uh, uh, the, 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 the entities the caller uh, uh, will they hydrate from the memory the entity finish the finish the, 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 the job uh, finish the work uh, and come back uh, return the value in that moment uh, the the caller will be rehydrating memory and uh, continue its work, its job. So it, it's just a, a round trip, but it's not a, a, a synchronous call, okay? It's just a, a round trip because the, the caller wait for the result. Signaling, uh, in, instead, is a fire and forget. The caller uh, communicates some, something to the entities and stop, go ahead. Exactly what we need, uh, for example, when we receive uh, a, a telemetry, we want to signal that telemetry to the entity, but we don't want to have a return. The entity can manage the, the telemetry when uh, it uh, received the telemetry, but we don't want to 
ever return. We just want to signal something to the device, to the yeah, to the device, to the entity. And also, if you want, you can retrieve the state for a single entity. In in our scenario, maybe good when I want to draw to show to to yeah to retrieve the state of a single entity because I want to yeah visualize. Uh, for example, display the, the, the telemetry received in the last uh, well, one hour, OK? If you look at Durable uh, on, the, on the type of function I mentioned before, the orchestrator is a serverless workflow. The, the orchestrator is the only one that can call the entity waiting for the response, because, because uh, the orchestrator manage uh, this situation in a serverless way. So you don't wait effectively for the request, for the re return, but just uh, wait uh, the end of the execution of the entity and then restart again. So the, the framework manage also this restart for you. Signaling, you can signal from a client. The client is a, a standard Azure function that want to communicate with the entity. For example, our um, function that retrieve the, the telemetry from the IoT hub and communicate to the entity is a, a, a client, so can signal. The orchestrator again, can signal and also you can signal from entity to another entity. In this way, you don't create a, cha a, cha a chain. You the entity number one communicated with the other entity, just signaling something and go ahead. So you don't have anything that are blocked. Finally, the state only the client can retrieve the state. In my solution, I organize uh, this uh, the block uh, with the question mark in this way. I create uh, three logical layer. Wait. The first one I call uh, front end layer is composed by Azure function and with two uh, roles. One is the function that uh, listen to the IoT hub and receive the telemetry as soon as possible when the telemetry arrives to the IoT hub. And the second part is the REST API that allow me to configure the device, to retrieve the device, to retrieve the telemetries. In the middle part, I have this, what I call stateful data layer. Just my, I give this name, but you can call uh, it as you want. As you want, uh, is composed by the entity. In this uh, place, you have uh, all the entity that describe your devices with different kind of devices and so on. Every of each entity manage the state for each single device. And finally, I have a, a, an integration layer composed by durable function orchestrator that allow you to communicate with external uh, service. So, for example. In this layer, you can have the notification orchestrator that send an SMS to the to the number you configure in the device, or communicate the message back to the device itself. So, the entities just manage the state. If the entity need to do something uh, else, use the integration layer. In this way, I have three different logical layer, and each layer has its own responsibility. I want to show you the demo. Briefly, let me open this one. Let me open the virtual machine in Azure, sorry. Uh, come on, okay. You have 10 minutes, I can show you this demo. Okay, you can find the full uh, solution in the GitHub repo, my GitHub repo, I, uh, Put the, I put the link of this GitHub repo in the in the in the slides. I start the simulator. Sorry, I start before the the entities. Okay, it's okay. Then let me start the simulator. This simulator simulate one device that send one telemetry randomly generated every thirty seconds. Okay, it start to arrive. Let me go to the solution here, and I put on the yeah. This is the this uh, class contains the uh, layer, the API layer, the front end layer, and in particular, sorry, I okay. This function here, this is a standard function. The only particular thing is using this durable client. Binding. This is a, a binding provided by the durable entities, the durable function. Sorry, but also the durable entities that allow me to 
communicate with the with the entity itself. So I receive a set of messages because this uh, this function are able to retrieve not a single uh, telemetry, but a batch of telemetry. In this way, you have less number of execution for the function, it's okay. I create, uh, this is uh, a factory I created. You can find the, the code is not important uh, now how we implemented the, the, this factory, but this is the, the key point. Uh, this is the way, this is the, the yeah, the, the class I can use to change the implementation of the device because this uh, factory retrieve uh, uh, generate the entity id remember the entity is the, uh, the the yeah the pair composed by the entity name and the yeah the entity key and using the disk identity id so changing the, the name of the ident or the of the device i can use different implementation i use this method this signal entity async allow me to say hey Framework. I want to interact with something that implement this uh, interface. Yeah, the, the entity ID is that, and you need to call this method. This is a method of the interface. So what's happened? The framework take the payload. The payload is the telemetry. Sorry, I don't show you, but this is the telemetry I received. Uh, serialize the telemetry on the storage, and then start the, the device and pass. This telemetry to the device, but not in synchronous way. So this client go ahead, manage another telemetry, and so on, so on, so on. So there is no blocket here. I show you the implementation of one of the entities in this demo. You can find two different uh, devices. Standard device is exactly the device I'm using. So it's a device composed by uh, yeah um, an hardware that. Uh, take the temperature and the humidity and send you. The other one, weather device instead, using a, a, an external service to retrieve the weather forecast for a city. So it's completely different, but uh, it's managed by the same solution because they just implement the same uh, um, interface. So let me put a, yeah, a breakpoint here. So when arrive the next telemetry here we have only one um, device so we receive a single telemetry each time probably i uh, stop here in this breakpoint and then come on uh, okay i retrieve the entity id i generate the entity id the entity id as you can see i i hope you can see let me try to show you is composed by standard device and it is the name of the class. Living device is the name of the device. So the device that generates the, the telemetry. And when I click on signal async, let me uh, let me go to the code here and uh, inside device entity. This is the method telemetry received. As you can see, this is a class. I don't have any particular decoration. This is a class. I show you what is the where is the magic, but it is a simple class, so I can test, uh, I can create unit test and so on. But anyway, I arrive. Uh, the, the the telemetry is arrived, so I continue. Again, the next one. So I don't wait for the response. Okay. Of course, if the telemetry is arrived, telemetry for the device one, and then another telemetry for device two, and another telemetry for device one, the telemetry will arrive to the device one in the same order, of course, because the, the framework behind the scene use a, a queue to, to manage this situation. But anyway, sooner or later, I enter in the telemetry received. And here is not important the code. It's, it's horrible, my code is not a problem, but the way I, is I receive the telemetry, I save the telemetry in the state, and, and, and I repeat, and I don't do anything because when I exit from this code, with this, with this, from this method, the framework saves for me the state in the storage, in the storage because I'm using the storage, but you can, you can change the provider, the storage provider you are using. So it's important because in this way I don't care about, uh, uh, yeah, the persistent uh, layer. The persistent layer is managed by the framework. 
the magic. What is the magic? The magic, uh, this is a function. So in, in some place uh, you can find a function. This is uh, the function that uh, allow you to use this class as an entity inside the logic, uh, the, the, sorry, the, the, the durable function. This is the endpoint uh, that are called by the framework when you signal the telemetry and then uh, this dispatch async say, hey, what kind of method do you want to use? Telemetry received, okay, I call this, that method. I retrieve the state, I call that method. When you finish, I save the state. That's all, okay? Good, but let me set you close this one. I don't want to manage all this device. I show you a real world uh, sample. Before I start this demo, I put the device. This is the, sorry, it's too, it's too big. This is, uh, yeah, the name is MX Chip, is a, a developer kit that are uh, sending messages, uh, sending telemetry for temperature of my uh, room and the humidity of my room. You can see that here in Rome, uh, there is. 31 degrees, so it's very hot. And uh, I have a dashboard. I know that the, 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 yeah, the UI is horrible because uh, I'm not a designer, but let me check. This is the Chipmax is the name of the device. Let me show you. Okay, this is the temperature in the last uh, one hour because I configured this uh, device to store one hour of data. I will use a fantastic tool to, uh, yeah, uh, to fresh my device. I hope that the temperature 31.10 will decrease and uh, sooner or later, I will see the same decrease here in the in the in the yeah in the in the dashboard okay so yeah uh, in the slide you can also find the link for this uh, dev kit is very simple uh, i manage by myself so if something is uh, managed by by me it's very simple so but the way is uh, this device sending the, the telemetry one telemetry every every 10 seconds more or less to the iot hub the function behind the scene, behind the IoT Hub, read the telemetry, change the state in the device every time receive the telemetry, and my dashboard uh, make a polling every 15 seconds now. But you can implement the front end as you want. You can use SignalR, you can use whatever you want. I use this, the, the polling just because I need something simple and retrieve the data. Okay. So completely from device to the uh, to the yeah to the the, the the platform. I want to show you another thing. I go there, go to configure. I tell you that the, the, the UI is horrible and I put here 28. This is the threshold. I remove my fantastic tool. Wait for a moment. Look here. What's happened when the, the threshold, where the temperature will reach the 28 degree? I hope uh, as soon as possible, I am finished. Come on. One second, come on, temperature. Probably I can choose 28 is too hot. Wow, 0 0.1 degree. And come on. Oh, what's up, Ned? Eh? Come on. Here must be, it is a demo. So, <laughs> okay, what's up, Ned? The device received the telemetry. There is a logic inside the device. If the temperature is over 28, start all the, the orchestrator to notificate through the, the IoT Hub, through the IoT Hub, a message to the device, and I show the message. So it is a 
bidirectional uh, yeah, integration between the device, IoT Hub, serverless, and come back. I don't configure my number, the, 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 uh, the, the phone number, otherwise I will receive also a, an SMS because the orchestrator that manages the notification can also manage the, yeah, the, the SMS, but you can implement whatever you want. Just a slide to conclude, uh, to, to close the, the, yeah, the presentation and recap, just because I think uh, it's important. Remember our requirement, event-driven scalability? Yeah, serverless is event-driven scalability. So our solution is based on one serverless technology. So may help us. State management extraction, durable entities use durable task framework to manage the persistence of the state without our intervention. So we are happy because we don't want to, uh, yeah, to, to manage this one. Asynchronous interaction, the, the function signals something and go, go on. So there is no blocking chain between the front end layer, uh, the, the, yeah, the stateless layer and the, the notification. And finally, through the interface, I can manage different kinds of devices if I want. And yeah, and so I completely um, cover all the, the requirements. Thank you very much. Now I'm ready for your question. This is my reference. I suggest you, if you want, to download this book. It's completely free. It's exactly all you need to know on the durable functions. And you can find also this demo. Is the, the explanation of this, uh, uh, yeah, this demo using durable entities. Thank you very much. Frederick, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Thank you very much, Massimo. It was a very interesting talk. Thank you so much for sharing this knowledge with us. Uh, I have quite a lot of questions for you, and thank you for the live demo. It was very impressive and very hot in your face as well. <laughs> Um, I'm ready. <laughs> you're ready? <laughs> OK. Um, if you want, I, I have quite a few, uh, except if you, Rob or Laurent, want to start uh, the asking game, uh, it would be my pleasure to, to open up. Yeah, I can start. Uh, if you have lots of questions, uh, I will give you the mic after that. Uh, you talked about the messages between all of the functions, and I I think you, uh, yeah. you, will, you, you talked about uh, JSON entities and JSON messages. Uh, are there any, some kind of, of um, standard around these messages, like uh, uh, unified uh, standard messages uh, formats from all of the cloud provider, maybe? You, or... you, mean, you mean the message I sent from my yeah, serverless backend, the IoT app, and then the device? Yeah. No, there is no, there is no, there is no, just you can choose the protocol you use. I'm using the HTTPS from the backend, the serverless part and the IoT hub, and then from the IoT hub to the device, I'm using MQTT, but uh, it's up to you what you want to pass in the, the message. Uh, actually, you have two ways to communicate with the device. Uh, one is this one that's called the cloud to device message. The message is up to you. For me, it's a string. Just a string that say your device is uh, under this temperature, and the other the other way is command. The command is something different. The command is uh, a, a string that uh, allow that arrive to the device and uh, a payload. Again, the payload is up to you. You can use JSON, uh, YAML, whatever you want. Just you can choose your serialization without any problem. I'm not sure you show you, but I implemented. Uh, a couple of command uh, stop and start uh, if i send stop uh, in the to the device the stop stop uh, the device stops to send the, the telemetry if i send start the device starts again to send telemetry so you can manage as you prefer generally messages is something that you communicate common instead is something you want to do that the device can do and on so on so start and stop it's an example I answered okay. your question. Yeah, yes, yes. But but you have to implement uh, deserialization of your message. No, yeah, For I, example, I no? yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, if you're using C sharp, you can create a class, and uh, yeah, using JSON dot net to serialize the class from the backend part. And when I write to the device, the device uh, must be able to understand that 
the, that kind of JSON is composed in a certain schema also. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. This device use uh, a, an, an, an ARM, a Cortex core, use the, 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 code, the, the code is C sharp, uh, sorry, C, C++, and I'm, I'm not using uh, in this way JSON from the cloud to the device, but the device when send the telemetry, create a JSON and put the JSON to the, tele to the, to the IoT app. Okay, thank you. I'm here for that. <laughs> I have a, a question. I'll start with a statement. Um, I love the signaling piece of that, that really enables easy building of asynchronous applications. I think asynchronous applications are great right up to the point that you want to get a message back to the client, especially on web applications. It's it's so hard at that point. You either have to pull or go through certain protocols. Yeah. So the, the part that you showed with MQTT, getting it back to the device, the, the signaling part, really simplifies building an end-to-end -end asynchronous system. And I think is a really good pattern for people to pay attention to. So the question that comes out of that is, can we also do that to web apps since it's so hard there? And then should we, or should we go with the other ways available to us? I need to implement a new dashboard in the future. Uh, you can use SignalR, for example, I am a C Sharp developer. SignalR is a way to use uh, WebSocket uh, or long polling, the SignalR is abstract, uh, the choose of the technology behind the scene but you can use a web, um, yeah, uh, web socket or long polling, but it's completely absurd. If you use a um, um, web socket, you create a, a channel between the, the client and the, and the web, and also the client don't need to, to make a polling. When the backend needs to communicate something, send a message, an event, and you can choose a broadcast message so all the client will be informed or a single uh, yeah, uh, yeah, target message. Uh, SignalR may be a solution. SignalR is something uh, built on, uh, yes, yeah, so web, web socket, or if you are using a web uh, browser that not, don't support web, web socket for you implement a long polling or other, mm -hmm. uh, other, uh, yeah, other implementation, but uh, yeah, allow you to abstract the, the, yeah, the, the using of, Web, web, uh, web, yeah, sorry, web socket. So, but web socket may be an idea, yeah. for example. Yeah, I need to implement a, a, a real good dashboard using uh, this, uh, this, this pattern. So, in, in that case, when the device will receive a telemetry, it manages the telemetry and send a message in SignalR to the, to the dashboard. So, the dashboard will receive the message and update the UI and desktop without polling. Yeah, I know that polling is not the best way because it's uh, absolutely inefficient. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you for talking about the topic of signaling because I, I have a, a question about this one. So you, you show the demo where everything is happening fine. What happens in the case you wrote wrong code in your durable entities and you're not able to execute the operation from the front end layer? Um, is there a retry mechanism in place on the durable entity? Who is taking care of uh, retrying these entities? How many times can you set it up? Can you configure it? Uh, okay, you need to. You, you need to. You, you have two different points. The first point is between the IoT hub and your backend. So in in that case, the uh, the, the trigger. So the way I used to manage the, the message, the telemetries from the IoT hub, allow you to retry if something goes wrong. So when mm -hmm. receive a telemetry, the, the function for you, the, the, the trigger you are using for you say to the IoT hub, okay, I manage these telemetries. If the IoT hub doesn't receive this, uh, this acknowledge, yes. the telemetry is still there. So you can, again, uh, retry. From the front end and the, yeah, and the, and the, Entities, uh, you need to, the, the idea is uh, when you write Azure function, you need to write the fees. The, the fees, the fees. The, you need to create something that uh, have the minimum uh, possibility to go in error. For example, when you manage the telemetry, you can, by default, use an, a man, an exception uh, manager 
in, 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 the, in the whole method. So you don't go in exception, except for something that you can control. So it's up to you how you can manage. Because uh, when you retrieve the telemetry, the, that telemetry are in your solution. It's another solution, maybe the front end is, an, uh, is, is composed by a function, a set of functions. So you retrieve the telemetry from the IoT Hub. And your uh, and your yeah backend the entities is composed by other other function and you use a queue to communicate but uh, it's not a good idea because this uh, approach is the same used by the framework so if something happened and you don't completely manage that message the 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 the, the function retry again because it's exactly the because the message is still there in the queue so mm -hmm. yeah the the, the 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 function start again so you have a safe uh, place uh, that is the communication between the single function composed used by the the durable task framework but the idea is uh, you need to write code uh, in the uh, right way we need <laughs> to write code in the right way everywhere yes, yes. but in the serverless is important because you can manage the telemetry. The, the problem is not uh, if you lose the telemetry or not, because you don't lose the telemetry. But because in the function you pay for the number of execution, what's happening if you receive a telemetry, you go in error, goes in error, and retry again. Go in error, retry again. Go in error, retry again. But I can continue since uh, <laughs> this, this midnight, but you can understand you have a lot of execution, so you pay more probably. So the best way is, uh, first of all, framework allow you to don't lose the, the telemetry. Yes, but you need to write in the right way because otherwise you don't lose the, the telemetry, but pay, pay more. Can you, implement like, uh, can you implement like on your durable entities at the beginning of each operation, a uh, counter or some, of some sort, just to limit the quantity of error retry and don't get uh, you can do a lot of things. Yes. If you are uh, a developer, you okay. can you can you can uh, think about something uh, strange. The idea is if your <laughs> method uh, remain uh, small, there is uh, less possibility of error. So okay. the the function is like uh, uh, yeah a microservice. Just need to do a single little thing. In this way, it's yeah. I, I'm a developer. When I write code, I make errors. So if I write less code, probably I make uh, less errors. Make sense? More sense. Less. Of course. I yes, know it's not possible better. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> OK. Um, just out of curiosity, do you have a retention period on the state of the durable entities? Or it's, it is, is it persisted forever? You mean the state of the durable entity? Yeah. No, no, it's uh, it's uh, forever. You can okay. choose uh, you can choose the the yeah the persistent layer, the persistent the persistency uh, yeah service. By default, you use the Azure storage. If you don't like it because the performance is uh, more or less twenty thousand operation per second, you can use SQL Server as uh, yeah as a persistent layer or another. The system layer called Netherit. Netherit is something related by developed by Microsoft Research, composed by a, a message handler like Event Hub, a, a, a database, a high-speed database, a page database. Yeah, it's but it's uh, in the preview now. You can only choose the persistent layer. The abstraction is guaranteed by the, the, the framework, but data still remain there unless you you, you delete manually of course okay. do, do you have an api to manage the instances of durable entities saying this one absolutely i want to yes. remove yes. absolutely yes okay. in my dashboard when i have the list of the device i use the apis in the durable uh, function that allow me to say hey framework what are the device of this type uh, and the start with this name and so on of course of course you can go in the storage and look at the, the table because in the storage uh, the devices the, the the entities are stored uh, one of each entity so you can read the device you can create by yourself your api it's not a good idea because the, the framework gives some api for you but if you want you are a developer you can do whatever you want <laughs>
Okay. Oh, nice. Um, I guess the entity, the durable uh, entities, um, use case for IoT makes sense, but it does also make sense for a lot of other use cases yeah. where you need to persist with an easy way state throughout multiple operations. Correct? Imagine, for example, imagine, for example, a ticket uh, uh, support ticket service. Mm -hmm. It's an event driven uh, architecture because someone creates a ticket, a ticket is an entity. Someone else uh, changes ticket because uh, I don't know, add the comment, add the message, uh, the state change, but just for that particular ticket. When you finish, you close the, the ticket, the ticket still remain in the database, uh, in the storage, but you don't occupy memory, you don't occupy CPU. It's like it's a serverless. So yeah, there is a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of uh, scenarios you can use. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend it to replace a database in some scenario? Yeah may make sense uh, for example if you if your solution imagine you have a big solution already existing you want to introduce durable function and your solution use sql server you can use the same sql server for the state of the durable function and for example you can create view or uh, store procedure and so on in that scenario makes sense okay. otherwise the storage uh, generally depends on the depends on the on the number of uh, of objects uh, yeah M must be okay P performance wise durable entities is fast compared to uh sql database or it's because of the storage oh, yeah. SQL, da sql database no sql database better, is yeah. more performer performer mm -hmm. than the storage also because you can change the 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 virtual core you have in a SQL database, so you can adapt uh, the performance to your request, of course, but you pay more because storage <laughs> is cheapest. Yeah, yeah, just uh, just uh, yeah. every time you choose a, a, yeah. a cloud solution, you have a compromise between the performance, security, and cost, and you need to, mm. to, to choose the right one. This is the difficult part of the cloud. Choose the right, uh, yeah, compromise between uh, performance, uh, security, it's important, I know, but it's, it's a, a, a cost factor and uh, performance. So you want a lot of performance, a lot of security, you pay more. Or you can use PhoneDB. I think Rob may have something to say about that. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I don't know okay. in the future. I, I don't know <laughs> if in the future will be deployed the new storage provider. It's not easy to implement by yourself. You can because it's all the framework, all the durable task, it's open source. But I look at the, the code, it's not very easy to implement your own <laughs> storage <laughs> provider, but uh, yeah, you can if you want. Yeah, it's, it's only driven by use cases. So if people start asking for yeah, durable absolutely. entities with a huge performance absolutely. or specific characteristic or special hosting, maybe this will uh, yeah, come you to have light. to. You have two layers for the performance, the layer of the serverless architecture, the function, the function is hosted in the service and the, 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 the performance for the storage. You can change performance of both moving from storage to SQL and also moving from consumption plan. The, the, the demo is and consumption plan is the cheapest. You have a 1 million calls each month for free to a premium. So you have more scalability. So you can move, you can tune your performance if you want. Okay. Um, a little bit earlier in your presentation, you were showing the difference between uh, client functions, durable functions, uh, yeah. orchestrator functions. Yeah. Um, do you have an easy, uh, like map to navigate which is the best function for your use case which no, question you, should you ask yourself you, to... yeah you you need to use all of them so uh, i explain okay. um the orchestrator is the, the implementation of your workflow you use the orchestrator when you need to implement a workflow for example in my uh, in my in my solution when the device check the telemetry and the telemetry goes over the the, the, the threshold you you choose uh, what happened you need to send a message to the device you need to send an sms if you put uh, the sms and these two operations may require time so the uh, the, the device the entities cannot do it because uh, i don't I, I don't stop my work i need to retrieve the next telemetry so i start an orchestrator 
the orchestrator is a serverless workflow that say, okay, send a message to the IoT app to the device. Okay, the message I show you in the in the device, and how the orchestrator do it, calling an activity. The activity is exactly the unit that send the message. Then come back, and then if you put the SMS, so there is an if. It's a workflow, so you can have a loop if and so on. If you put the SMS, call another activity, then interact with the Twilio. Twilio is a service to send SMS, to send SMS to my device, for example, to my phone. But the orchestration is serverless. So when the orchestrator starts, I need to send message to IoT. Okay, start the activity. The orchestrator will be the iterator. When the activity finish, the orchestrator come back, restart, and go ahead managed by the durable task framework. So if you need to implement a workflow, durable uh, orchestrator, if you need to implement an activity in the orchestrator because the orchestrator can only orchestrate activity, okay? If you need to manage the state, the, the, path, the name of the pattern is the aggregator pattern. You can use a durable function, durable entity, sorry. And what is the client? The client is the beginning. An mm -hmm. orchestrator, an entity start from a client. So you receive, because it's a simple function. So for example, you receive the telemetry from the IoT and then you signal the device. You can receive the call in the REST API to retrieve the list of the device and then call the durable task framework to retrieve the list of the device. This is a client, this is a client layer. But download my can... book, uh, you can find all the explanation. <laughs> right, sorry. Stuff. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> Well, at the end of the day, the most powerful one is the orchestrator, and you can even do state management in the orchestrator because when it shuts down, it preserves state when it comes yeah, back up. Yeah, the, the orchestrator is the most powerful because uh, the framework for you restart the orchestrator every time a, an activity finishes uh, and uh, yeah, uh, rearrange the state to go ahead. So the orchestrator, the, the framework for you saved all the events that happen in the orchestrator. So the orchestrator start start the activity, the hydra date, the activity finish, when the orchestrator restart, go to the table and say, ah, I start again later, uh, early. I call the, the function, so I need to do the next operation. So this, uh, yeah, the most powerful probably is the orchestrator, but if you need to manage a state, uh, you need a durable function, durable entity, not an orchestrator. Because oh. an orchestrator start and finish sooner or later. May, yes, may, it, yeah, it's the duration may be, time, yeah, yeah, okay, in time, yeah. The duration of the workflow, yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. Oh, great. Start okay. and finish. While okay. the entities start, something changes, I start again, something changes, like the device. In the meantime, I arrive to more or less uh, 500 messages, telemetries received by the device, and my device continues to, I have 8,000 8, messages free. So I can mm -hmm. I can continue. So you can go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> and so in this ecosystem, the simplest one was the client function. Is there a way to not have to develop this client and directly yeah, call from IoT up to your Yeah, entity, the, also example? also the activity probably because uh the yeah one oh, is okay. started from a, a standard trigger by the function and call the orchestrator or the entities using the trigger uh, uh, provided you by the durable framework and durable function the activity start from a trigger by the durable function and you can use the binding you want so yeah the, the beginning and the end probably are the must be the simplest because uh, you need to do a simple thing for each activity or for each client you don't create mm -hmm. a, a, a big activity each activity do some uh, little thing and the orchestrator orchestrate the activities because in this way you can uh, test it's like a microservice. Uh, let me let yeah. me use the yeah use the, a, a word a word yeah, yeah. nano service yeah, yeah maybe yeah. <laughs> yeah let me use the, a word that uh, uh, yeah it's inflationated in this uh, in this moment but yeah the 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 client and the activity must do little thing. Testing and when them. they are doing very very little thing like even only like transforming payload in between IoT Hub and the durable entities, is there a way to skip all together this client? Uh, I'm trying to move the conversation to the functionless world that uh, allows configuration in some parts where code isn't that much needed. 
But is this a possibility or you always have to use a client or an activity to trigger an orchestrator or a durable entity? You can trigger an orchestrator using a client. You cannot uh, trigger an, no, sorry. Okay. You can uh, trigger an orchestrator using a client or an orchestrator because an orchestrator can sub-orchestrate another, another orchestrator. Mm, yeah. You mm. cannot call an orchestrator by a function, activ activity function. And also okay. you need to, to create a small activity and small client because remember in the Azure function, you pay yes for the number of execution but for the duration of each function exactly. and the occupation in memory. So if you mm. use the object uh, without, uh, you are not necessary, you uh, occupy memory and every time you pay more. So you need to, to tune exactly what you need uh, in the single function, cli client or activity. You cannot do the orchestrator, you need to create the orchestrator as you, your business said to you. Yeah, you cannot you cannot choose uh, how the orchestrator is, but you cannot choose uh, how you split your activities in the activity. Okay, in the activities. Mm. Make sense? See what you mean. Okay. Uh, and when you start to have on a project very small pieces of activity, a very small function, those activity and those clients, um, we start to see a lot of files and kind of sometimes become messy to have a correct developer environment in such uh, projects. Uh, during your demo a little bit earlier, I was amazed by the actual declaration of small piece of code that should be shipped in a specific function, but actually lives within a much global file that gives you an overview you, of the entire process. So it looks quite good. Uh, sorry, I, 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 you can, um, the fact you have uh, different activities, small activity, is not related to, to the fact that you have one file for each activity. You mm -hmm. can have one file for with the three activities, for example, and it's how you organize the activity in your uh, project is up to you. Activity is mm -hmm. the method in a class marked by a name and uh, use that using particular trigger. So you can put all these in one file or one file for each activity is up to you. So of course you need to, yeah, you need to have uh, guidelines uh, before you start the project. Otherwise you can have a lot of files. In my yeah. project, for example, I have uh, three activities to send a message and I put the three activities in the same file because uh, it's logically related to send SMS. The activity to send a message to IoT Hub is in one file and so on. So you can manage uh, mm. as you prefer. Framework, the framework manage, just oh, take the name, yeah. yeah, just take the name and take uh, and uh, uh, when scaffold the, the your your uh, your DLL uh, can understand that 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 function is an activity because use a trigger a particular trigger. You can put uh, whatever you want. Hmm. No, it's actually quite good. Makes sense. Yes, it does. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Take a look. Uh, is, as usually, it is a tool. So it means depends on the scenario. In some scenario, it's good. In other scenario, it's not good. But I think um, you need to, yeah, you need to know what is the, yeah, the topics, the basic uh, of the, the fundamental of these tools. So you can evaluate each time if you can use or not. But it is a tool. You don't use the tool because it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a fashionate, but you use the tool because uh, your requirement uh, map the tool. Remember, so maybe the best tool in the world, but uh, depends on the scenario, depends on your requirement. So yeah. Do you have um, any insight on what is to come in the uh, durable entity space that uh, is, for example, a feature that everyone is requesting? And maybe you can give us a sneak peek. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Do you know where it's going, durable entities? What are the biggest uh, uh, requests from various people actually using them in production? Use I, I think, uh, I think, uh, I think that yeah, the the only the the, the 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 change we will have in the in the pre, in the next months will be the different uh, persistent uh, layer. So SQL is an example. Uh, Netherite is another example. 
probably in the future will arrive different uh, other, other persistent, I, I don't know, uh, Cosmos maybe, I don't know, but probably, because the, the framework uh, is complete. There is no other to add. It, it's just a framework. You need to create your solution using that framework. So the framework allow you to create an orchestrator, manage an orchestrator, uh, calling activity. You can call activity in parallel. You can use uh, for each uh, and so on. You can create uh, entities with the state. Uh, so it's up to you to create your code to implement your scenario. So the, the framework is cool, in my opinion. The only okay. thing that can change is the persistent part of the state. So yeah. But I'm not, mm. uh, I don't know, honestly, I don't know the roadmap for the, yeah, for the, for the, for the storage. But I think the, the, the only thing that you can change is where you store the data. And, uh, I don't know if in the future will be simplified the way you can create your own storage. In this, I tell you, in, in this uh, in this moment, it's not easy. It's not easy. Okay. You can, mm. but it's not easy. It's not made to be used somewhere else without a huge investment in terms of times. Yeah. yeah, depends on the requirement. So depend depend on the on the customers. If the customers say, uh, I don't know, one hundred customers say, say, we want Cosmos DB. We want MongoDB, we want, I don't know, whatever you want. Probably someone will implement the persistent module for that kind of service. If nobody asks another storage, another persistent layer, we'll have a storage account, SQL Server, and Netherly. Yeah. Just asking, is it, is it open source, the, the durable Absolutely. framework? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Azure Function okay. is open source, the runtime based uh, on, on which the uh, function, durable function, durable entities are open source. The, the extension for durable entities, so the durable entities, the extension for durable function is open source. The durable task framework that is the responsible for the persistence is open source. And also SQL, Netherit, and uh, storage provider are open source. So it's all open source. Great. I put the I put the GitHub repo. I I send you the, uh, the slides. In the last slide, I put the link to the GitHub repo of Durable Entities, uh, Durable Task Framework, my solution. So you can you can. Yeah. I, I will add them to the description there. of the video, and I will exactly. visit it as well. But it's nice to see that. Uh, no, the other thing we can change. Uh, another you you ask me the the evolution. I don't know if, uh, but uh, you cannot create now durable uh, function with Java mm, in the future, yeah. probably we, we will have yeah. uh, probably. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Massimo, for all this presentation. Thank you, too. It's a, it was a pleasure for me. So <laughs> I hope, yeah, it, was uh, I hope well. it was clear and uh, can be valuable for the for the people. You have my, refer my reference mail and uh, Twitter, so if you want to Give me some bad words you can, if you want. So yeah, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> well, thank you again for your presentation. It was a really nice talk, and it was nice to discover everything we can do with this uh, durable entities in terms of uh, state management. Thank you for the live demo thank as well. You. It was really enjoyable. Uh, thank you, Laurent, and thank you, Rob, for joining us today uh, as well. Thank you, Rob. For thank this, you, Laurent. Uh, warm up thank you very much. One. Um, just a quick reminder, next week will be our second warm-up session with Guillaume Lambert talking about uh, asynchronous events, uh, uh, the return of experience on bed-click architecture. And uh, like I said at the beginning, I hope to see you on June 22nd uh, for the main event in Paris at La Belle Villoise. Uh, you have more information on paris.serverlessdays.io and also maybe New York, like uh, Rob said earlier in the, in the video. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Okay. I wish you all a very great evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.